Gunner James 105. Uh, today I've got a uh, uh, display and uh, a little talk on the items I was issued. It's not, of course, the items I was issued. Uh, some of it is, uh, but most of it, most of it I've collected over the years. Uh, so uh, just on the table here is, uh, uh, with the help of my good wife, who's uh, just giving a uh, quick pan and then uh, uh, move in here and I'll uh, uh, explain a few things. So, anyways, um, the, uh, the one thing that I am missing from this whole kit, uh, which we're dealing with uh, the period that I uh, was in, was around uh, from in, in the mid 80s. And uh, I believe that this is pretty much uh, 70s, 80s uh, type. Um, I'm not sure when they switched over, but they had the CAD pad. Uh, and uh, so they went to uh, uh, a very high tech uh, camouflage pattern and uh, had also eliminated the, uh, we used to have a work dress and I, I didn't bother collecting the, the work dress. So um, I had uh, uh, pretty much the combat uh, items and uh, I do have a, a fellow that I know uh, uh, gave me his uh, dress uniform. So um, I uh, have first of all the um, uh, I guess the thing that I'm missing uh, what, as I was about to say I'm missing the crazy little slippers we had for uh, when we were in our tents and, and had to make a, a visit to the uh, latrine I guess in military speak and so these these uh, rubbery uh, type slippers uh, I haven't collected. I may one day just to finish the, the collection. And so, uh, but, the, but the main thing missing from this collection are the, uh, the weapons. Um, and certainly uh, I could get uh, some deactivated, but uh, uh, deactivated Sterling, for example, that, that I was able to use um, submachine gun, Sterling submachine gun, uh, that's deactivated is in the neighborhood of $2,500. Uh, an FN, uh, FAL, the 7.62x51, uh, is a prohibit prohibited um, firearm. And so unless you have that license, which I don't, um, you are not allowed to have one of those. Perhaps a deactivated, but I haven't even seen a deactivated one. Um, one day, perhaps, uh, something that is obtainable is the, uh, and of course it was officers that had those, the uh, uh, 9mm Browning high power that's been used since the, the Second World War, we're still using those and we've replaced the uh, uh, FN with a uh, AR type rifle that uh, is the uh, 223 or, um, round uh, Sterling uh, submachine gun is, has been eliminated, they, I'm not sure what they have, uh, uh, but anyways, um, just uh, move in maybe with the camera there and we'll uh, go over the uniform. Um, the one thing uh, with these is when you're uh, uh, cleaning them, you, you wouldn't uh, ever dry clean them. You wouldn't, uh, I never did put them in a the dryer. I think you'd have to do that on a, a low heat, but you'd, you'd just simply wash them like you would at your regular laundry and then I would hang them up. I'd, I'd sort of shape and uh, form things and just let it uh, air dry. So uh, beginning uh, with the beret, uh, you would you had to wear it a certain way and some of the guys took their liners out so they could and, and of course you'd, you'd take it in the shower with you and you'd, you'd form it you know you get it all wet and you'd, you'd keep pulling on this here and of course the the fellows without the liners you weren't supposed to do that but the, they'd get that thing hanging way down there so but I, uh, I kept mine the way I guess we were taught and uh, so the uh, cap badge over the left eye, uh, about two, in, uh, two finger width uh, above your eyebrow. And so uh, as far as the uh, beret, I was with the uh, artillery reserve. So the cap badge is uh, from that. And uh, so, um, yeah, we have a couple of breast pockets, uh, a couple of very large pockets on the side. The one thing about these uniforms, uh, when they replaced the, uh, went to these from the old woolies, uh, a lot more comfortable. A lot looser fitting and, and a heck of a lot more comfortable. Um, the, uh, the pockets have uh, some separate uh, little pockets inside for your uh, ammo, for your magazines, and then uh, you would have uh, the drawstring. Uh, this one's missing the drawstring here, but there'd be a drawstring 
brown there. Uh, some very big uh, pockets on the, on the pants. Uh, the combat boots, um, we would lightly polish them for parade, but uh, uh, mostly it was a uh, waterproofing solution we put on those. Uh, your pants were, were bloused uh, over the tops of the boots and you tuck your laces in uh, uh, to your uh, boots. The, uh, the lacing, of course, was uh, outside over inside, uh, so that was uh, part of the uh, uh, regulation. I just, uh, it just occurred to me that I've uh, got to grab something here, so I will uh, just, you just stay right where you are, I'll be right back. Because while I'm standing here, I might as well put on the uh, 82 pattern webbing, put on the 82 pattern webbing correctly, and uh, so, Quick release buckle there. So on that, a couple of uh, ammo pouches uh, here. Uh, a lot of times we have uh, uh, this here would be for the uh, you're taking your flashlight. A lot of guys would um, duct tape their uh, wound uh, package here. And then uh, I've got a, uh, just give me a second here, <gasps> side view. And uh, so we've got the uh, knife, fork, and spoon set there. This here would be uh, the um, gas mask bag. So that's your gas mask bag, and you could uh, carry your uh, rain suit in the, uh, in the other bag. And this is for your uh, canteen. And all of this has the uh, kind of a quick release. That actually came out in, uh, I'd seen it on the World War II later gas masks. So you just simply pop that open. And this, of course, has straps that would, you'd pull that up to get uh, access to your uh, magazine quickly. So they have that. And uh, there's actually inside of one pouch, there are, there's two sections. So you could, you could then have four four magazines on your uh, webbing. So anyways, uh, simply, or not so simply, depending on your dexterity. There we go. So yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the uniform that we had, that uh, I wore. Uh, of course I was a lot uh, different in this area and in this area when I was uh, in, but you, you get the basic idea. So, uh, yeah, and then you'd wear your uh, your rank uh, on these, uh, uh, they would pull out of there, but you couldn't, uh, this was here, the uh, uh, regiment that I was in, and uh, of course that in uh, pretty much all the uh, uh, armed forces uh, would be, excluding the Navy, of course, uh, that would be Private, uh, as an artilleryman, you that was gunner. So I was gunner, gunner James, 105 is the, the howitzer. And so uh, this one here, now I, of course, purchased this from Surplus. This would have been uh, uh, where I, I would normally sew my uh, rank as well. I've got some of those, haven't sewn it in there. I don't know, It's you can see the, the actual color has faded, but uh, Again, in the artillery, that's the other uh, uh, difference in that you would be corporal, or in the artillery, you'd be bombardier. So this was formerly a bombardier uniform. Some reinforcement on the elbows and uh, on the knees. So anyways, I'm going to uh, uh, steal the camera away from my wife and uh, give you some close-ups now um, on the... Um, table I've got many items that would be your regular items but then there's a whole other side of it which is another portion of this video which being in Canada uh, we have a winter kit so we had a whole uh, ton more of items for that so um, hang tight I'll be uh, right with you
So I'm doing this video because um, I have a collection to share, but whenever I would look for information um, on the internet to try and uh, uh, see any uh, anything at all on, on this subject, I couldn't find anything. And so uh, hopefully for those that are searching, this will uh, kind of help you along. I don't know that there's any uh, interest whatsoever in the uh, reenactment of, of this period since uh, it doesn't involve uh, any uh, huge world events uh, during the period I was in, but this is uh, this is the Canadian uh, uh, equipment, the kit, and uh, I was uh, part of that. So anyways, this is just a, a, a pamphlet, more or less a uh, so the uh, selling you on the idea of joining and uh, it's a pretty cool pamphlet it actually uh, unfolds I can give you that there so and yeah that's uh, basically uh, something that's missing I turned my uniform in and forgot to remove my my name on uh, to be able to keep that but as I I mentioned earlier the uh, wound badge or bandage there and uh, so yeah the uh, pamphlet's pretty cool it's opens up and gives you uh, that view there some of the uh, Well, that pretty much is what I was involved in, and uh, of course all the different things that we're dealing with when we join, or some of the things we could be dealing with. So, anyways, uh, oh yes, <clears throat> under the uh, combat jacket was the uh, simple t-shirt. It had a, a quite a, a V in the neck so it wasn't uh, showing up under the under the uniform and uh, so I had mentioned uh, when I had the uh, webbing on uh, since I don't have uh, as my wife does eyes in the back of her head as uh, the kids are always told the uh, rain gear would fit in this pouch and the gas mask in this pouch here so there's your canteen pouch so I'll just get rid of that now, if I were uh, if I were an officer, I I might have one of these uh, uh, map cases. You, know, uh, you could store your your pens and your. It's got all the different uh, compartments. Of course, it'd be rainproof for your, uh, your maps and for your notes. And then you had on the back, you could uh, you could place uh, the couple of uh, straps to hang it but you could place your map you're using in this uh, looks like it's kind of uh, some imprint from something's shown up there on the inside but uh, you put your map in there and uh, protect it from the rain a little zippered pouch up there so yeah work gloves we were given work gloves so kind of a rubbery uh, uh, pebbly finish on there for grip but we got work gloves, and of course we had, uh, I'm not sure if it was about four pairs of socks. And uh, these are actual, I kept these, these are my towels. So you were, you were issued army towels. Uh, a couple of little, uh, these here, uh, one would use in the bottom of their uh, trousers or pants if you want, uh, to help in the blousing of the, the bottom. Uh, these are my uh, ID tags and uh, of course over on this side is your name and your uh, your uh, religion and all that sort of thing but uh, you would uh, not want to have that bottom piece removed because that probably means you're dead but uh, yeah so I have my my tags um, so just moving on, 
Uh, this is something I collected. It's not uh, something I was issued. Uh, it would be uh, uh, part of the uh, same uh, kit, I suppose. Uh, reg, reg force, regular force, or whatever would have that. A little sewing kit. There's your thimble rolling out there with some buttons and, and this and that. And uh, I do not have a bayonet, but there's your, your bayonet uh, frog that would go on your webbing. And uh, just moving on, uh, these are the most fantastic um, mess kit uh, pieces. I think it's called Melamine. And so we were, uh, we had, we wouldn't lose them. Nice bright yellow, but uh, fairly, fairly, fairly durable. Uh, and uh, with those, you would, uh, depending on uh, what you're doing, you'd have these uh, uh, meals uh, ration packs. And I'll do a video on some of those. I've got quite a few. I, I guess I wasn't hungry on some of those exercises, and uh, so I brought a bunch back. And uh, I have quite a few that are fairly complete. Um, and then uh, these here. Now these are uh, very well insulated. This is um, for your thermos. The type I had was this type, with this type of cover. Get that off of there. And then you'd have your, uh, your thermos. And uh, there's a... Basically, uh, this one here is a little, <coughs> little beat up, but uh, that's your thermos. And uh, I guess while I'm at it. So if you're wondering, that's what it looks like. And uh, this one here, just a different type of opening, you know, like so. And then... Uh, you have your thermos in there. This one is in like new condition. Very, very nice example. And so then you, uh, as part of your kit, you had, uh, well, this is the Ascot. You'd, you'd wear that with your combat uniform. So that, that's the artillery Ascot. Sleeping bag, uh, very incredible sleeping bag. Uh, people that uh, uh, were in the, Canadian military appreciated these because they kept you warm in very cold temperatures. And people who are looking for a very high quality uh, uh, sleeping bag system, uh, I'm going to do a separate video on this and then we'll talk about uh, what's inside there. But uh, whether you're uh, any kind of outdoors person, uh, hunter and, and uh, camper, whatever, this is fantastic. Um, this here, this is the uh, the pants for the uh, the rain suit. So the rain suit is right there, and it's got a hood on it. Pretty nice rain suit. Big enough, and so that all folds up that and uh, and the pants into that one pouch that I was showing you there. And with your uh, uh, sleeping bag system. You would have, uh, this is a half tent, so you could use that for a ground sheet when you're in the five-man tent, and then you would uh, uh, basically, uh, it's fair-sized, I'll, I'll do a video on this as well, I'm going to set this up in the backyard, but uh, you would have you and and, uh, and a buddy would uh, uh, each have one, and it would zip it together, put it together, and you have yourself a little pup tent, so I'll uh, set one up in the backyard one time just to show that. So moving on, uh, this is just uh, the can of the uh, waterproofing for the boots. This here is the helmet, the actual helmet that I uh, that I had when I was in, and uh, so it's fairly, it's 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 totally complete. Of course, it's got the chin strap. Across the back of your, uh, the nape of your neck, perhaps. Well, not quite, but anyways, this is uh, this is my helmet. I traded in a, a different helmet so I could keep it.
and then I picked up a couple others. Uh, my mother had found some liners at a garage sale, and for ten dollars, I was able to buy the shells, and I don't know for maybe five dollars more the uh, the covers. But uh, yeah, they're uh, they're all complete. And so part of the uh, the next portion when it deals with the winter gear, I've got a different helmet uh, covering for that. And of course, uh, some brass um, 105 casings, and uh, here's a tube that you would have had your uh, shell in. This one here would have been a special one. Um, normally they came together in one long tube. Uh, just some uh, boxes from training. These here are, uh, they've had the blanks in them. And uh, this is a replica of the type of grenade we had at the time. This casing here is uh, the one you'll see. You usually have the, your uh, brass for the uh, white phosphorus and things like that. Whereas the, uh, the regular HE round had this type. And you can see the, it's a wrapped steel. Unlike the solid brass. And so this book here you were issued because there was many ways to, uh, you had to uh, you had to know how to put all this stuff together and uh, how it's worn French and English but yeah you've got all the instructions for how to uh, put your your stuff together how to wear it so you've got the of course, you're the same as, as many years past uh, fighting order, battle order, uh, marching order, I guess you call it. And uh, oh yeah, somewhere I have to grab that. Oh yes, it's up on the wall there. And uh, this here now, this is uh, this concerns the 105. It's everything you need to know. Everything is in here. There's the whole manual on uh, on the 105 and, and other things. I mean, you've got your rear view. So it's the left view. Right hand. So this manual, if you wanna if you wanna go fire a howitzer, you can study that manual and you'll know what to do. There were seven men in the uh, on the gun. Um, of course, uh, in the Canadian military, every man had to know every job. So whether you were the, the person uh, doing the traverse or elevation or loading or whatever, you all had to. Uh, you all had to know how to do every job. So if one man, uh, this is a model, I have to put it together one day for display. Uh, if one uh, person went down, the other could take his place so your gun wouldn't be out of action. And so you could pretty much, uh, if you had to, run the whole thing by yourself. And uh, just a little, uh, there's, there's, there's a ton of, uh, this and that instruction and uh, this of course is giving you uh, direction on your haircut and uh, if you're wearing a beard and so you've got all that uh, you've got your uh, manual honor drill it's a, it's a pretty thick book for honor drill you've got uh, your regular and ceremonial so it's it's uh, very elaborate on every type of formation and uh, ways to march, etc. Uh, the flashlight, flashlight comes with. Uh, usually, use the use this uh, when you're not wanting to give away your position. That red lens. There's other colored lenses in the uh, in the base, so uh, you would use that for uh, signaling. Uh, you know, you've got. Uh, Let's see if we spin that off. Yeah, so kind of an opaque and a blue 
and a yellow and of course you could take the red, red lens out and you've got a regular flashlight and uh, of course it has the uh, uh, ability to uh, oh, batteries are dead but you can you can flash morse code or whatever with that button once you turn it on you, you can flash or one more click and it stays on Let's attach it to your webbing so we're all issued that and then this is the uh, dressing so that uh, I was issued this here didn't have to turn that in the uh, ear defenders as we called them very important um, then on to uh, gas masks. We didn't have a lot of training on gas masks, but we did have some, and uh, so that's the Canadian uh, tape there with uh, just some uh, pieces that were in there. I don't have uh, it would have been an atropine uh, injector in injectors. Uh, yeah, this is a little chemical detection, so you're going to uh, be looking for changes in the color of that paper and you'll know uh, what you're up against so bits and pieces from that and of course uh, yeah I think there's uh, this is what we were given just basic instructions on the uh, gas mask um, I'm just gonna zip down um, don't want to bore you too much with uh, but that's just one of the exercises there was usually four guns out at uh, on a weekend and uh, just some photos I took. I, it's kind of hard to take pictures when you're a bit involved. There's a command post and uh, yeah so and that's that's the five-man tent there that's that's me and uh, this is a Chinook bringing in uh, the howitzers. That's that's how we were doing it that weekend. And uh, just uh, I think we were out on, uh, I don't know if that was our compass march. Here's kind of a, a good picture of the, of the group. Here's my favorite war picture right here. Us and the cows. And uh, we were able to fly out to the base with uh, the Iroquois. They brought three Iroquois, flew us out, and uh, took us home in the, uh, or no, actually we, we came back in the Iroquois, but we went there in the, in the Chinook and uh, had to make a couple of landings because the thing had some kind of red light flashing on the dash there and guys running around with fire extinguishers and then finally they came with the Iroquois we, we landed in the field and they took us to the rest of the way this is kind of the layout in preparation for firing so we've got everything all ready there on the uh, tubes empty tubes and then uh, there's your charge bags and everything's ready to go so you just uh, when you get the number of charge bags you Slip it together and then uh, number one will rip the bags off, making sure the count is right. And uh, this incredibly handsome fella is, uh, yeah, so there's my dress uniform. I'm still, uh, still fairly handsome according to my mother, I think. I mean, my, I'm not... I don't have a large bank account, so I think my wife still thinks I'm handsome as well. And uh, so then we have uh, the canteen and canteen cup. And uh, we weren't issued these, but I picked this up. This is this is uh, a place like so, so that you have uh, your. Uh, Little opening in the back there for air circulation and the, and the holes in the front. You would use these uh, uh, little tablets. I think there's about 10 in here. They're just a little white disc. And you light that and then uh, place that inside the, or in the bottom here and heat up. 
heat heat that up, boil some water for soup or whatever. But uh, there's that, and I I may have bypassed um, just a little instruction on the uh, face paint, so I can do a little more detail on uh, on that. I might even do a little demonstration. But you'd have uh, your face paint, and there was uh, actually uh, summer and winter, so. Maybe I will give a, a little more detail on that. So that uh, pretty much completes the uh, the kit. And uh, then I'll move on to the winter kit. So hang tight. Actually, before I do, I kind of missed a step here. This, well, that's kind of... This is our backpack, of course. So this one here, you can fit a lot of stuff in there. It's got the uh, the three pockets, three pockets on the side. And then you slap or strap your sleeping bag in with these straps here. And uh, there's your hip belt. But they're a very nice backpack. Uh, this is the uh, it'd be a combat combat parka or pa co combat. It was uh, actually from about here all the way over across the back is rubber lined so that uh, it would help with the rain and uh, resembled the combat jacket a lot. It's got the same kind of look to it and, and pockets, etc. So. That's the combat jacket. And then uh, that is 100% pure virgin wool. Very nice warm sweater. And uh, it has the work dress type. Uh, you'd wear that a lot of times with the work dress and you'd also wear it on your winter indoctrination, but uh, that's the type of, uh, it was a black you'd wear on the work dress. And it's a long, uh, a long, long, long sweater. So keep you nice and warm. And then uh, just sliding past the, uh, the raincoat, I've got a dress uniform from the artillery. And uh, this is, as I say, given to me, he was a captain in the reserve, good friend of mine. So that's the, uh, the pants and the jacket, the tie. I haven't got the shirt. Or the boots but uh, that's uh, that's the artillery dress uniform and then with that uniform is a, uh, a cap that okay on to the uh, winter kit <laughs> 